Hello, God bless you. This is Ellen Mongin and Deacon Pat's here with me because today we present a special podcast, a special podcast of Deacon and Deer. Hello, Deacon. Hi, Deer. Pat, I just got back from Arizona. Wow, we love Arizona. The dry. As I said to my kids, we got back from Hades. It was so hot. It was really hot. Was Don't really, go there in the summertime. My favorite temperature is 100, and it was 100 almost every day. It's like a perfect 100%. That's what I like to get in praise like that. That's an opinion. Well, we had tons of fun, and we enjoyed the talks, and we enjoyed the people. It's a once a year, I'd say, retreat that we get to go on because of Pat being a physician, retired now, but still in his heart. He's position every day is life. He has children who come and ask him <laughs> and a mother. But he also, also what it does for me is that we are one of the first 50 people that when we used to go in the early days in the 90s that went, and we are the young people. And now we're the, we're the oh, old that, people. <laughs> now we're the old people. We're like one of 1,000 or something. It's almost 1,000 people. Interesting to meet people. And the best part for me was that um, I catch up with old friends, like we saw Deacon and Mrs. Vaughn, who are dear favorites of ours. And and Dr. And Mrs. Rowe, Mr. Fong is also a doctor and deacon. He's Dr. Deacon like Pat. And Dr. Rowe, who is our on the board and also represents our Georgia area. Mm-hmm. We're sad not to see Father um, Benet. Scott Benet. And we were sad to see not, uh, my sp- favorite spiritual director, Father. Um, he's my spiritual director. I'm Petowski. 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 I did like him a lot too. So. Still praying for you. So here we are. We're going to talk about some of the talks and some of our favorite things. And um, what do you say? What are your favorite thing? These are a few of my favorite things. <laughs> what do you say? Well, yeah. I, you know, it's um, one thing about the Catholic Medical Association. Um, even if you're not a physician, uh, you can get something out of it. Anybody who's involved in health care uh, certainly can. Or uh, any clergy in terms of um learning things that will help you in uh, counseling people who maybe have health problems if you're a pa um, carrie was there hi yeah. carrie huber she was another favorite and if you can get something out of even if you're just me a nobody a mom yeah <laughs> exactly. a speaker. i got so much out of it yeah because it's it's although sometimes it can be uh, a focus on mostly some uh, m- medical issue uh, more often than not, it's obviously focusing on spiritual aspects of the care of patients. And so... And the theme this year was being not afraid. Courage. 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 Oh, courage. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was not afraid to go. I was, yeah. we, we, went, we boarded our airplanes the first time in many years, and we did fine. We came back. We came back fine as well. It's always good to get away. It gives you a new perspective on life. And Pat and I are all about retreats because it, it's a time when you sit at the feet of Jesus. You um, get refreshed. They refresh. Refreshes your soul. Yeah. Like in Psalm 23, I'll lay down green pastures to refresh our souls. So you're tired and weary. Next year's CMA, Catholic Medical Association, will be in Orlando, Florida. Another one of my favorites. The weather is perfect, but I don't know about which month it's going to be perfect out there. Maybe a dry, it may be a wet, a wet, <laughs> wet heat. It's a dry, I would say dry heat. Okay, so, so, Deacon Pat, take it away and say some of your. What was one of your fries? It seemed like everyone had the same favorite. It just seemed like it, it was it was always like who could top this one? Right. And, and you know, the theme courage is boy, do we need courage um, in this day and age. And um, I'm glad in many ways that I'm retired um, because to be able to practice medicine um, with the ethics that the church teaches has become very difficult and um, seems to be getting more and more difficult, although thankfully there's been some cases in the media where um, people have won the right to uh, live life according to their faith. And, uh, uh, but in medicine, and I've said this for years, is the way um, our country and governments can control physicians is uh, by threatening to take away their license. They don't have to put them in jail. They just take away their livelihood. And so, uh, and uh, we've seen people threatened uh, with uh, losing their license and some have actually lost their license 
um, because they didn't go along with uh, the media and medicine um, and, and the uh, powers that be. And, and one of the things that has been very disturbing to me um, is to see that the uh, major medical organizations, uh, how corrupt they are. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be careful uh, what groups you join and where you seek guidance uh, as a physician or healthcare um, person. And so. And it's okay to interview your doctor, ask you a yeah, few questions I, I think, before you go. I think you have to trust done. him to get better, right? If you right. have a doctor you don't trust, it might be a time to reanalyze, think about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I mean, you, you're going to see somebody who is um, maybe making life and death decisions and do you know what your doctor believes? Mm -hmm. Do you know uh, what their ethical values are? Because they're going to have some ethical value, whether it's based on faith or, or not. Uh, but then they may not. They just, whatever the government says, whatever the CDC says, uh, that's what they're going to do. And uh, that's not the kind of uh, physician you want to be involved with, that, that where you can go in and just say, oh, I want X, Y, Z. No, the doctor needs to really care about you mm -hmm. and want to do what's best for you. There's a um, there are certain principles, okay. medical principles, regardless of your faith, mm -hmm. that every physician should certainly uh, follow, and that's do no harm. Um, don't do something that's going to harm people. Now, yes, there are things we do that have a risk of harm, and that but that has to weigh be weighed against the benefit. Uh, whatever you're going to do for a, um, a patient is something that must benefit them clearly. Mm -hmm. And That's then um, another principle is uh, justice in terms of um, the poor should have access to health care. As Catholics, we should want everybody to have um, good health care. Not necessarily thing they want, but should have the things they need in terms of maintaining uh, their health. And surprisingly enough, we would always sit down with someone, get to know them, met some interesting people, and I'd always ask their field of medicine, and a lot more in preventive medicine nowadays. Mm -hmm. I wonder why that is. <laughs> That's our preventive medicine, because mm -hmm. we would take care of ourselves from, from birth to death. We would be in a better place, and if we... Oh, overdid. Usually it's access, it's either lack of or access that causes your health to suffer. So I did meet a lot of preventive medicine. Mm -hmm. went to, we even went to a rodeo, didn't we? Kind of yeah. a small scale rodeo. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. It was very, very nice. Usually at every Catholic Medical <laughs> Association <laughs> meeting, there's some activity or event that people get to choose to uh, go or not and for a certain amount of money. I'll say that the leader, the man that spoke, he was, was he the president? The man that spoke, the um, master of ceremonies, was he, was he a no, president? No, he's, he's the company, but they knew him. He was well known, apparently, okay, by so the person who set it up. Um, I yes, he did, job. you mean, yeah. The doctor, he did a great job. He introduced each person. Malay. He, he knew a lot of the people personally. Dr. Malay, yeah. Uh -huh. And so I thank you for him. He was very entertaining, yet he did take a lot of time with each person. He orchestrated the questions. I want to just say that um, that I, I really did like the one doctor, and you might remember her name. She shared how important it was to have a Catholic facility. And she, she mm -hmm. worked. She waited on the Lord, which was, number one, the hardest thing to do is to be Ready to, you feel like the Lord's spoken it to you and you want to get it rolling and you should away the Lord by asking the bishop and he was bishop in Wisconsin and you know his name? Rick in. Yeah, and he was he he was yay and all for it and she hadn't even presented her case and she was outstanding and her name was Dr. Both of them are forgetting that's embarrassing, so we'll just say and that doctor was a lot here. <laughs> it's all bustless. She was very good though. She was very um polished and she she really has a heart for having more faith and medicine working together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That way, Pat was always the doctor that was able to pray with his patients and go visit at home. And he was an old fashioned doctor. I admire what he did and took time for what he needed to and get to know their story. Half of healing is knowing the story behind mm -hmm, what's going mm -hmm. on. So that brings us to the one doctor. We're not gonna know his, as I wrote down the name, but it's okay. Another, do these are really na nameless, just not to pop up their pride. And his name, he was an interesting doctor from New Mexico. 
told a powerful story about pro-life, how this, this lady he knew was 15 years old, and it was embarrassment to the family, so she went away to have her baby and brought it back as like a, kind of like an adopted child, and that was his mother. But then he went on to share some of the very hard things in his life, losing a, a spouse after the Dr. attention. Dr. Tudor. Yeah, that was our, that's everybody's favorite. And he, he, no one could get past he, the Kleenex. It was a story of, um, I couldn't help but think of Joe. Uh, so many tragedies and so many things mm -hmm. that had happened to him more than anyone should have to deal with, and, and yet he's maintained his faith, so he's a great witness. Where was he lost one wife, he lost one child, and then he remarried, had two more children, makes it up to 12, I think, or 13, and then lost two more children. And he was, he, I think what sealed him through besides his faith was the faith inside of the people that would surround him and accompany him. He had a really big, since the Orlando Bishops Conference we went to, where they had the discussion on accompanying, accompanying someone when they're, when they're down, they're, they're mm -hmm. having a hard time. And you, mm -hmm. one gets on one side, one gets on the other, and you cut along the way. And that was, he, I just admired him for sharing his faith family would be there for him and every instead of going like oh my word here we go again they were just there accompanying him and I, it was powerful to me what was some of your favorites um well we had um, one of the talks was on uh misinformation oh i did like that one that was it was and basic, code name BS. basically the, the, the yeah <laughs> i did like it i liked the one, BS part. I was there were so two impressed. speakers and, and one of the speakers uh made the point of uh, that uh, what we call misinformation, uh, what we used to call it was BS. <laughs> and you all know what that means. So, so we, we uh, did laugh. What was that one? That was a little break off session, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. Two so um, in the, the fact of how there's so many ways we're getting disinformation and misinformation and um, how we have to be vigilant in terms of what are the sources of our information and uh, looking for truth. And to be honest, one of the speakers said something about, oh, well, uh, peer-reviewed journals and whatnot. Well, um, I'm beginning to doubt those. I used to read them all, oh, okay. but uh, they're, they're controlled by boards that mm -hmm. um, sometimes are going along with ever whatever agenda is. We've seen that during the pandemic. Um, so um, we need to be vigilant and careful. And it's, it takes courage to not go along with the stream in terms of a stream that's maybe heading in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. And so there's so many ways and so many talks that were given uh, in terms of having courage, in terms of uh, being a pediatrician and at end of life, bringing your faith to bear in terms of taking people who are a care of people who are dying and uh, a talk on following your conscience. Mm -hmm. And so there was a talk on that in terms of um, a, a lawyer. Um, and there are great resources in this country uh, that um, if somebody is attacking you because of your um, faith in terms of I don't want to be involved with abortion, for example, um, uh, and, and they're threatening you uh, in terms of your job, um, there are people who make it the, the point to defend conscience rights. Mm, and and uh, it's an ongoing battle. Um, and we have to be diligent and continue to fight and fight at state level. And part of this is um, as physicians, people tend to you know not be involved in politics, but um, we need to look at who in our state can uh, protect us, you mm -hmm. know, and protect children mm -hmm. from mutilation and uh, uh, not uh, allow euthanasia to be uh, legalized in the state because it's happening uh, at state level and it's a constant battle and that's where misinformation um, frequently comes into play in terms of uh, uh, euthanasia and promoting it and they distort things and uh, change words and try to use words to make it sound like, oh, it's um, something good. Um, and uh, yet, at the end of life, our duty is to care for people. Sure, you do whatever you have to to ease their pain and suffering. 
but you don't kill them. Well, I think we have to add this too. There was the, there was the doctor that really, if I would say, most touched the hearts next to the man who had lost Joe. Next to him was Paul. <laughs> he wasn't named Paul, but I'm just we're doing code names today. Paul, he had been thought he was a doctor and he was like awesome and he you know that kind they know Dr. Hello. McGovern he knows everything yeah, his name which is no name he, he's, well and yeah, then he was he's the, publicly he he was involved in media and um, doing podcasts and uh, doctor doctor uh, program so, oh, yeah, no, okay. um, and uh, then he went through the dark down the soul yes he, he had did. some anxiety yeah. issues and, and he was he became, treating the anxiety mm -hmm. But he wasn't treating and dealing with the root cause of the anxiety. And so for a lot of people, if you have a lot of anxiety and fears, um, sometimes it can be physiologic. So he's talking tired. about CBD in terms of taking that to help with anxiety, which does help some people. Um, but you ask yourself, what are you fearful of? What, what's causing the anxiety? Mm -hmm. um, and, and like I said, there are some people who are wired such that they're kind of hyper and easily their physiology, their nervous system um, tends to lean towards that on the spectrum of normal. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they tend to be uh, more anxious physiologically in terms of feeling it, um, maybe not necessarily emotionally, but their system, they feel nervous and anxious because of their physiology. And what if you don't feel nervous and anxious, but you make other people feel nervous? <laughs> <laughs> I'm more that flavor. I make other people, I go, oh my word, I'm not even, up. I'm not even, up. they do. If personalities are something, that's the person. Mm -hmm. And we have to kind of, it says in scripture, it says in the, the saints that know yourself and then and know God. You have to know both to say, now is this normal for me? And he did realize, and then he had to, what I liked about it was he said his wife stood by him. It was a very difficult time. And we all go through different things in our walk. Down mm -hmm. around the soul, high on the mountaintop, at a plateau, trudging through the desert. That's the walk. And when we, when we have to hit a spot that like that man, Dr. Unknown, who was in New Mexico, and Dr. who was, we just mentioned, then you have to have other people walk by you. And mm -hmm. hopefully you'll know, you'll be able to trust your family will walk you through. We're walking my mom through right now an illness. We came back from mm -hmm. out of town and she had an illness. It's been two weeks. So we're a little tired today, but we would have those names for you. If you give us a call or, or write us at wowellen at yahoo.com or Deacon Pat at pmongan. pfmongan at outlook.com. Yes. Right, so we'd like to hear from you and hear what you want to say. Have any questions about Catholic Medical? You can look it up, CMA, mm -hmm. on the internet. Mm -hmm. Pat will tell you real yeah. quick the story. Well, one of the things that, that too was um, an important uh, talk was uh, updating uh, what's going on in terms of the uh, gender issue by a, a pediatrician who has uh, worked with people in Europe and has contacts in Europe yeah. um, and how things are changing rapidly in, for the better um, in Europe. Um, and we seem to be not um, changing for the better um, as they are. And uh, that f for the most part, their treatments are all about uh, psychological treatments um, mm. and not doing uh, medication or surgeries. Mm. Thank goodness. So, um, so who yeah. calls struck? I was struck by Mamer, what she said. Once they introduced her and said she has a two week old baby, Dr. So and so, I, I couldn't get past that she had a two week old baby and made made the made the talk. But there was those two of you want to talk about her or the, the gal. There's a lot of women speakers. I was really blessed by both men and women. Mm -hmm. I'm not mm -hmm. either one, I like both. But there was the one lady who had what knew that she was speaking and she knew a year in advance. Do you remember this one? I met her in the bathroom. She was very lovely. Mm -hmm. And she um she actually said that she had a, a, an accident when she was hiking the woods, cut her leg. Oh, oh my yeah, she, yes. That was another one. See, we can't really give an award to any of them. They're all good, <laughs> equally good to remember their, them all. But she, she almost bled her yeah. husband, who had been military, saved her life. I kept saying, hats off the husband that stood by her during this. Mm -hmm. And so she was able to have to 
we learn things. I mean, really, it was a lot of trauma in her life. She had a lot of re rehabilitation. Her arm, was her, her arm or like her both her arm. Yeah. And she said, say, she said to me, she said, my big accomplishment was to try to get Christmas cards out. It was months later when she after she had that she had a you know do we have mm -hmm. you know life is unpredictable. We think we got it together or think we know it all, and then all of a sudden it's it, life strikes and we I mean a curveball and we have mm -hmm. to catch it or throw it to someone else or. Mm -hmm. I don't play baseball. <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, really, it was like a powerful story. The whole thing, everything you said was a powerful thing. I think, yeah. I uh, wept through that. Several one. of the um, presentations, basically, we, we need to be in a relationship with Jesus mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit all the time, every day, every minute, because you just don't know what's going to happen and, um, in terms of near death or dying or uh, suffering trauma or um, uh, losing a loved one. So uh, this is um, something that we all need to work on in our lives is to have a, a relationship with Jesus wasn't that and the know thread? that he's there. Wasn't that the thread that sewed them all together was they all had not only their knowledge of their location of, you know, their mm -hmm. I don't you call it, but then they also had the faith that saw them through. I don't think they're all sad. If we get the one happy one, <laughs> these were a lot of ones that struck her heart. The mass was gorgeous, and the, the bishop was there, Bishop Conley. Conley. And we were struck by, at least I was struck by, all the babies at mass, and so precious. And then Pat and I were walking to the Eucharist, and we noticed that we were last in line. We were like the last, we were like be the last one in the door. We kept walking and praying, please multiply the loaves because we just need Jesus. And that was really amazing when the little priest went into the sacristy right. right and came out with a different kind of host, but better sure me it was it was Jesus. And we had we had we had a really um wonderful evening. I met some nice people at the banquet as well. All in all, we, we felt like we we, did, we prayed about going. It was a long way away, Phoenix. We have an elderly mother, 97, live with us. We made the decision, and God just blessed the socks off us. We did get to talk to the man on the bus. Remember who was that man on the bus? He's mm -hmm. humble Mario. Man. Mario. He was a delight. He um, he was a very well-worded theologian type man, and he was patting him chalk, chat a lot about the CMA. It was very interesting. I, on the other hand, since I wasn't in my field of podcast hosts and writer, I listened a lot better, and I thought well, that was a big accomplishment. I did have the incident where I went to get myself breakfast, and it was going to be my Diet Coke, right? Mm -hmm. I walked a mile in not the snow, but in 100 degree heat. Uh, yes. And then I got there, and it was Diet Pepsi. My whole, my whole table knew that I only drink Diet Coke, and, they, <laughs> and I then I got lost, and I followed this man that looked like a doctor because he had the tag, the same as mine. And I said, Pat, I'm lost, but if this guy goes towards the breakfast place, I will find you. Otherwise, come and get me. And look at the man did head me in the right direction. But other than that, it was an adventure. You learned something for everybody, and everyone can learn something for you, right? So, Pat, yeah. what did you learn, do you think? What do you do? What's your takeaway? Mine was like, wow, this group is really on fire for the Lord. And they have grown mm -hmm. from 100 people, 500 people. Like, nope. was it, we were mm -hmm. the first 100, right? I think it was 100 people to start out with. Now, well, it, I think it's encouraging that there are um, many doctors out there, and, and we don't hear about them, um, but there are many doctors out there and uh, who are trying to be faithful to the church's teachings while they practice medicine, um, and uh, in spite of a culture and society and various medical organizations who want to thwart uh, their ability to practice according to the faith. And so it takes courage to do all that. The, the reality is it takes courage to live, you know, in terms of in this day and age as a Christian and being faithful. Not as bad and, and doesn't take as much courage as uh, living in, in uh, many countries throughout the world where you know, Christians are the number one persecuted religious group throughout the world. Um, so uh, it takes courage. Uh, Jesus had courage. He suffered um, and, and knew what was coming. He knew what was coming. It, talk about courage um, in, in suffering and dying on the cross uh, for us. 
but of course he did know um, the joy that was set before him. Yeah. And the father had him in Paul's hands. Um, I want to say my hats off to the staff. I mean, they were more than bent over. I miss this one man that used to be a part of this group, and he was one of the head of something. Can't say what, but he used to find if I when I get lost, he I would see him and he'd take me where I need to go. Well, mm-hmm. the staff at one point I got lost again, which is my history. And this one lady, she just walked me right to the door of my little breakout session. So was it the Catholic Medical Association staff or the uh, Arizona? This is no staff. The, the conference was at at the Arizona Grand. Right, this is a staff. They one lady said, "Yes, sure, and, spa. Right and, and I would uh, put a plug nice. in for them in terms of. Nice. All the all the hotel resort staff were pretty amazing in they terms were amazing. of uh, positive, smiling, but they always helpful. Diet Coke. You know, <laughs> they yeah. go, they try, they don't know we like Pepsi okay. It was fine. It was fine. I that was what I offered up. No, I offered up my pain. I actually was walking on a broken mm-hmm. something or other that. I had, anyways, the Adoration Chapel was well attended. Everyone was, it was open to anyone who wanted to go at any time. And it was always full when I went in there. Yes, so as Ellen and the said, masses. The yes, morning. we had mass every morning. Um, that was my favorite. And then there's a, the day of the banquet, the last day on Saturday. There's always a white mass. Oh, the white uh, mass is beautiful. And uh, the church was obviously packed with Catholic medical in addition to other parishioners <laughs> who probably were like shocked when they walked in. So um, many lovely people. Um, and so, uh, yes. I do believe in Lots of opportunities to be also, and confession is available throughout the yeah. conference too. I think there's something special happens when God calls people from all over the country together to honor his name and just be there to learn and listen and to be have the separate for I did. There was such a grace that, I mean, we really were happy to catch up with Joanne and our friends, Deacon, Dan. Dr. Dan. And we, you know, it's always good. But then even if you don't see your old friends, like a lot of them are missing, Chris and um, Peter Morrill, which, you know, I like to see them. And Father, like I said, Father Benet, someone we're missing, the Morrells, who we love dearly. But you meet, it's like you meet someone and you may never knew them before. And at the end of your lunch together in the 100 degree heat outside in the brick buildings, you feel like you bopped it. And I, I did. I love the hot. I'm going to say more time because there people, some of it doesn't like the same temperature. And 100 really is my, mm-hmm. is my favorite. So I felt warm for once, <laughs> warm, warm by the love of the people, warm by the, by the food provided, which was food, but also learning food, banquet, words of encouragement and love. And then I felt warmed by the temperature. And I was sad to go, but we did have a great time. And, um, I don't. We're going to go again. We we just feel like we want to encourage you. First of all, go go on the computer on the internet and look on CMA. Secondly, Catholic. It's a, it's cathmed.org. Okay. And but if you look up Catholic Medical Association, it'll show right up. Okay. Sorry, I got it wrong. But that's okay. It's my first mistake of the day. Secondly, see if there's mm. a chapter in. <laughs> see if there's a chapter in your town because you know. What they're trying to do is like anything else in a group is to find together different people that are, mm-hmm. are trying to serve Lord with gladness. And this is a field. If, so again, if you're a nurse, a doctor, a PA, a lawyer, a nun, a priest, I mean, we miss Father Johnny for sure. Father Johnny, shout out to you. He, he wasn't there as well. But if you're one, a person that wants to learn more about how to live your faith and your vocation, mm-hmm. then please look up and get join your group locally so that next year when you get to the meeting in Orlando, and that's in September again, I believe, right? Mm-hmm. You'll be able to find people you know from your group and new people who will seem like your new best friends. So, so you can pat, I know you always come. Pat always comes prepared with a paper. <laughs> so he's got the word you say, but I just want to encourage you. Even me as a person, secular, I just loved it. Every time I love it. And just that's so I feel to pray for and to share burdens with and to uplift the name of Jesus. Jesus was the main guest there. It's the center of the stage. Amen. What do we want to say? Word. Would you go again? Yes. I mean, wait, you have not yes. one more. Yeah. We have one minute and 20 no, seconds no, we're, and counting. No, no, we're so. good. No, we're good. We're traveling, traveling along, along, singing a song, side by, by side. Y'all God come. God bless you. Amen.